Welcome to Moth Magic. This is uh, Dr. Roger Kendrick coming to you from Hong Kong, giving you a little bit of an introduction on moths. Why moths? Well, that's what this is all about. Give you a little bit of understanding what they are. How many there are? Some of the magical survival strategies. How we can use moths for our own benefit and to conserve wildlife. And how we go about recording moths. That's really what we'll be outlining in each of these little episodes. Okay, first up. So what actually is a moth. Well, they are the vast majority of the order Lepidoptera, the butterflies and the moths. Um, Lepidoptera being scale winged insects, they are holometabolous, that is, they have a four stage life cycle. So here you go four stages eggs, larva, to the pupa, and then to the adult. Noting that the pupal phase might be naked, as in the photo here, or might be with a cocoon made of silk. Hemimetabolous insects, by the way, don't have the pupal phase. They go egg, nymph, rather than larva, and then straight to the adult. Okay, now, so much for where they come from. What is it? that identifies moths as moths. Well, Lepidoptera, which is butterflies and moths, are so-called from the Greek, Lepidos and Teron, meaning scale winged. And there are 27 features that actually make Lepidoptera what they are. Now, of those 27, there are four that you can see in the field quite easily. Um, and on small moths, you need a hand lens, but for bigger moths, not such a big issue. So let's walk you through those four main features. First up, the scales. Thousands of them on each wing, top side and bottom side mostly. And each individual hair flattened, or at least modified, shall we say, into a scale-like structure. Think roof tiles on, a, on the top of a house that are tiled upon each other so that you have uh, a, a covering that but for now all you need to know is that they're scaled and they're tiled and you can see they're overlapping here second feature on the front of the head is the coiled tongue or hostellum actually two tubes the zip locked together and the moth or butterfly can straighten up the tongue and then curl it up when it's not in use. For feeding. Third main feature. Above the tongue are the labial palps and these are still part of the mouth but they're modified. Not for tasting but for sort of smelling. For smelling carbon dioxide content to be precise. The third segment of the palps have a little groove on the inside and in that groove are lots and lots of very very tiny sensilla that detect carbon dioxide very very minute quantities parts per million stuff because carbon dioxide is given off by flowers when they are at peak nectar so when butterflies and moths are looking for nectar to drink then they use their labial palps and the von Rath's organ, the carbon dioxide sensor, to see which flowers have got lots of nectar. And item number four is the antennal comb. You can see here a little bald patch, no scales on it. And this acts like a little lever, if you like, almost a latch, that can be moved away from the leg, opened up, the antennae popped in, the epiphysis is then closed, the antennal comb is closed, 
and the antennae pull through to clean the antenna. So it's a comb. Right, last main point. If you see a little eye right in the middle of the head, called the median ocellus, you know it's not a butterfly or a moth because that's one of the unique features of butterflies and moths of holometabolous insects. Everything else has that, butterflies and moths don't. Now, butterflies and moths, or moths and butterflies, the age-old question, how to tell them apart? No. Yeah, my cat doesn't think much of that either. Um, the answer is, it's complicated. Go figure. Which one of this slot is the butterfly? Is it the dull one, the colourful one, the lying flat, the arched up over the back? Or if I tell you actually that that's daytime, that this one in the middle is daytime, the one to its left is daytime, the one to its right is daytime, top right is daytime. Um, and yet only one of these is a butterfly, so the day flying, light flying thing doesn't work. The colourful versus drab doesn't work. The posture, how the wings are held, doesn't work. There are so many rule breakers that these kind of old wives' tales are actually not really helpful to tell you whether it's a moth or a butterfly. Yeah, it's that one. Did you get that? So let's have a look at some things that do help. First up, the antennae. If you look on the butterfly, the antennae are clubbed at the end. Whereas the moths, all their antennae end in a fine point. No matter what fancy ornate bits and pieces you can see on the antennae, or maybe not see in some cases, none of them end in this club-like antenna. So butterfly to the right, moth to the left. What else? Well, the wings are helpful, but not where they're sat, as it were, how they're joined. Here is a moth, and you can see this little brown latch or bar known as the frenulum. And it latches into modified scales that that's called the retinaculum. And most moths have this system that joins the hind wing with the frenulum to the forewing. Butterflies don't have that. Now, unless you get the thing in the hand, you're not going to see that. But it's a surefire way of telling butterflies from moths. Well, almost. Some moths have lost this latch and hook mechanism. What else? Well, you might be familiar with the caterpillars. So here's a moth with one pair of abdominal prolex on the abdomen. Another one with three pairs. This one has four and this one has four. All butterfly larvae have four pairs of dominal prolegs. But the looper moth and the semi-looper moths, two different big families of moths, don't. So we know they aren't butterflies. In fact, about half of the caterpillar species are either one pair of abdominal prolegs or two to three loopers or semi-loopers. By the way, if you see a caterpillar that has every segment of the abdomen with a pair of prolegs, it's not a butterfly nor a moth. It's a sawfly, hymenoptera, bees and wasps, etc. Um, and a lot of people don't know about that, but hopefully they will now. Okay, that's as much time as I have for part one, what is a moth? See you later for part two, where we'll look at diversity. Okay, catch you later. Cheerio for now.